Hello and welcome in to the Karis Pen Co. YouTube channel. My name is Paul. I am the marketing uh, strategist and inventory manager and product developer and a whole bunch of different titles here at Karis. And today uh, I'm going to talk to you about the Bolt V2. Um, roller ball or ball points or multi refill ca capable uh, pen that we make. It's kind of our unique take on a bolt action style pen. Um, and with that, you know, we're going to get into some of the differences and similarities between all the different uh, materials and the refill capabilities. And probably not much on the history on this one. You can look at some of our older videos if you want to look at that specifically, but we're just going to talk about the Bolt V2 um, pin. And with that, let's just switch over real quickly to, uh, to a top-down view of several of our, uh, what we consider now standard options uh, for the Bolt V2 pin. Um, and so what I have here, the three pins that I have here from bottom to top, are going to be a tumbled raw aluminum version, which is kind of our standard EDC everyday carry uh, version of this pen. Uh, the middle version is uh, all bronze. So that's not brass, that's bronze, that's machined bronze. And then above that is our latest edition, which is the tumbled titanium um, version. And then at the bottom and the top are the refill options that we ship kind of the standard options that you can select from. At the top, we have a uh, Pilot G2 refill, 0.5 millimeter with the G2 size spring that we have specifically made for our pens. And at the bottom, we have a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 Parker style refill with, uh, with a Parker style spring that we also have made specifically for our pens. And then also a machined uh, spacer that has a set screw that we basically, when you elect for that option, the ballpoint option, we thread that into the bottom of the bolt knob internally. And it basically takes up the difference of dimensions for the Pilot G2 refill. Uh, we make the bolt V2 out of five different materials aluminum in a variety in both raw the tumbled raw and then a variety of different anodized colors and then also brass which is not pictured here all raw brass c360 brass then we also have a tellurium copper uh, version which is not pictured here those were our first three standard versions that we released on the kickstarter campaign in 2012 and then last year we released the C630 bronze version and the titanium grade 5 6AL4V grade titanium version. So three of the five that we have in our standard offerings are here in this picture. Uh, there's a variety of different weights available for, for these. Um, and I'll talk through the different weights specifically right now. Uh, if you're looking at the aluminum version, it's going to be the lightest option of all of them. And it will come in at about 29 grams or almost exactly an ounce. Um, and that's with a refill. Um, they're about the, it's a little bit heavier with the uh, Parker style because the aluminum is a little bit heavier with a set screw than the plastic refill, uh, the plastic G2 refill. So there will be a little bit of a difference, 1.1 ounce. You know, it's a little bit of a difference if you, if you elect for the Parker style refill with the spacer. The brass weight is gonna be considerably heavier. It's our second heaviest option at 70, 73.9 grams or 2.5 ounces. Um, it is a rather durable, very heavy option. If you, if you are a type of person that really likes a heavy pen, that is definitely one of the ones I always suggest. Um, it just, it, 
Yeah, it does. There are a lot of people that we get that's like, I really enjoy a very heavy pen. I don't like to push on the pen. I, I, I want to use the weight of the pen to kind of aid me in writing. Um, but I also don't want it to patina as quickly. And I want it to be kind of a showpiece. And that's definitely where I, I normally point people in the direction of the bronze. In terms of our the Tellarium Copper, that's going to be the heaviest version of all five of the options, uh, weighing in at 76.1 grams, 2.7 ounces. Um, definitely the heaviest option. It's also um, what I would consider and what many people would say the, the most unique option in terms of the fact that it will age over time quite nicely with the patina from oxidation. Uh, it just it starts to look aged once you really immediately upon use really the more you use it the more it's going to get that um that aged look that a lot of people really uh, lean towards then the the bronze version comes in at 65.4 grams or 2.3 ounces so it is less than the brass uh, but still quite a, a significant weight in the hand it's definitely a pen that you're going to notice the weight, especially for longer writing sessions. If you're a person that gets hand fatigue easily uh, and you're used to writing with very light pens, I, I tend to steer people clear of any of the bronze, brass, or the copper options. They're, they're so heavy. Um, for longer writing sessions, for me personally, I just I can't really do uh, those longer writing sessions. And then as far as the titanium version, uh, that one comes in at 40.4 grams or 1.42 ounces. Um, it's kind of middle of the road, a little bit heavier than the, than the aluminum. I find it to be the perfect weight in terms of these pens. Uh, the aluminum for me has always been a little bit light, um, but the titanium is my sweet spot. It's, it's right there where I feel comfortable. I can write short notes. I can write for a very, very long time. Um, and, and it's just a really, really pleasant writing experience. One of the best writing experiences I have with any of our pens, probably second only to the Vertex fountain pen. Uh, I also tend to swap out my G2 refill for a Pilot Precise V5 or Pilot Precise V7 uh, refill because I prefer those the writing experience that those afford as opposed to the standard G2 and that's just a direct swap with the with the with the G2 setup on the bolt uh, there's no tinkering that's necessary you don't have to adapt anything um, so let's move quickly I'm going to go through some of our uh, walk you through and talk through some of the older versions of these pins just some some photos of the colors that we have available or have had, have had available in the past. Um, currently, so that's a, one of the shots of our standard variations prior to the addition of the bronze and the, um, and the titanium. So you've got the copper and brass, uh, red, anodized, violet, olive, blue, dark green, orange, gray, and black. Um, so that's basically our main uh, the standard colors, and unfortunately, we do not have the green in stock at this time, and I'm not sure when we'll have it in stock in the future. Um, the source that we have for that green, unfortunately, is no longer providing us with anodized, so we're looking for an alternative uh, option. Same with the, the orange and that specific color of gray. When we're out of stock on the, the orange, that, will go, that color will go away at least temporarily until we are able to source a new orange anodized vendor and the gray will change from our standard kind of slate gray it will be more of a blue uh, blue hued blue tinged gray that we've seen on some of our other pins um, and then let's see here um, There we have a uh, the we that was a special release version of the pen that we did. Uh, it is the Squatch version. We did it for the Camp Karis 
uh, series of pens. It's a matte brown with black hardware, and then we laser etched the uh, Muggy on Monster, who's which is a an Arizona version of the Sasquatch. Um, let's see if I can get this. To, there we go. S scrolling now. I couldn't figure out how to scroll through my photos. I apologize for that. Um, this is a BMX inspired series. Uh, I believe this one was. Oh, it wasn't the Thrasher, a street beat, perhaps. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what we named this one. Uh, it was a matte blue with a matte gold and then black uh, clip and screws. A really nice version on that one. We did about 50 of those, 50, 70, 50 or 75 of those. Um, really awesome job on the anodize on those. We sourced uh, some really awesome gold with that that was quite popular. Uh, we did a, a, a matte, a light blue, matte light blue with, or actually this was, this was a, one of the first satin finishes we got in Anodize. Satin, a light blue satin finish with b black hardware. Again, this was a small batch, around 50 pins. Uh, really nice Anodize on this one. Unfortunately, haven't been able to get this Anodize in, in quantity since then. Uh, somehow the color just doesn't come back looking right. This was the first BMX series that we released. This one is the Thrasher. It's a, a gold, bright dip gold with, with bright dip black furniture on it. Uh, super successful. That one like flew off the shelves, which we don't normally have a lot of gold and we tend to only do it for specific special releases. So we hadn't had gold for maybe three years when we got these, three or four years when we, when we did these, this, this release. Uh, this was uh, kind of an homage piece, an unofficial homage to um, to the to a Disney film that features monsters in it and a specific character in that. I don't want to get into any kind of copyright infringement, but uh, this was a bright aqua color with, paired with a violet. Uh, then we had our ultra green, which was all matte green and a black clip. Uh, again, this was a relatively small batch that we did. I think a year, 2019 in the fall, we released this. The unofficial Warner Brothers, um, <laughs> Warner Brothers cartoon. Uh, this was the carrot that goes along with a specific cartoon character from Warner Brothers. Super famous. We did it for the, the anniversary of that specific character. Uh, another big hit. Uh, this was a matte, matte orange with matte green uh, knob. And this was before we, we were able to source uh, anodized clips. Otherwise, the clip would have also been orange for this one. But it was a really super awesome I wanted to get one, my hands on one of these, and unfortunately, they blew out of here so quickly I wasn't able to get one. All right, so then we're there. Let's switch to the next group of photos just quickly. Uh, this was another one of the BMX series where it was a bright dip orange with the teal. Um, actually, I think this was the street beat, so I'm not sure. I can't remember what the other one was called. Um, again, we did about between 50 and 75 of every single BMX inspired pen. And this was, I think we ended up doing three or four. This was the second one we released after the gold. It came out awesome. Really liked the color combination between the orange and the, the, the teal or the aqua blue. Ultra black. One of the first pens we ever did in an ultra black finish was the standard bolt. And this is one of the first ones we ever did in the V2 version. Uh, still one of the one of the most popular pins that we make in the most popular colors. Uh, this last year we added Cerakote, and this was one of the first color options that we did with the bolt was the red, white, and blue. We've never been able to do a red, white, and blue kind of holiday, July, Fourth of July, or any other kind of um, America esque pen. Um, and so when we had the uh, uh, ability to do that. We jumped at it and did these. We still have some of these. We ended up doing 200 of this batch. And so we still have some of these of the second, we have a, a little bit of the second batch left. So if you're on the lookout for some red, white, and blue in your pen collection, I highly recommend this one. The Black Widow, which was kind of the first test on the aluminum clips. We basically paired the red clips with, um, 
with the all with the ultra black body and knob, um, and this referenced the spider, not the superhero character. Um, although a lot of people move that way, but like this, it's kind of uh, it just looked good that way together. We could have also gone in the route of of cars, but then we we usually do car themed options with the retract pen. This was a Karis Creepers release, the Tennessee Wildman, which was a distressed blue gray with a red knob and a black clip with the logo on the side of the Wildman's face. Um, we released this last year as part of the Karis Creepers sets. Another one of our Cerakote series, Monster Green Cerakote, but that nice neon green with all with a black hardware, super classic book. We really dug this one. Unfortunately, this one is out of, out of stock, and I don't know that we'll bring it back anytime soon. Uh, there we go, wrapped around. And then the last group of photos that I have here is, so this we did a, a distressed, we called this the steampunk version, where we kind of marred up some pens, then had them Cerakote them with a, a bronze color with, a, with an antiquing black over the top of it. Uh, they came out absolutely amazing, super awesome, like, these things were so popular blew right out of here. And once again, um, I do hope to be able to come back around to these uh, sometime this year, or at least a version of this pen, uh, with that color on it. Cause it was just so awesome. The titanium, this is kind of close up of the titanium. Um, since we just released that here is the, we took these on the bench that they were with some of the, the tools that we use to test tolerances in terms of the threads for the barrels and some of the other, uh, uh, the internal diameter of some of the holes and stuff like that. So that's what you have here. Uh, this was a flame titanium close up on this one for the flame titanium pins that we did. Uh, I don't know that we'll end up doing this specifically again. We are looking at adding some options in terms of anodized titanium uh, but we might move away from the flame titanium, at least for the, the short term. Another group photo. Again, unfortunately, that green is out of stock and won't be back anytime soon. And the orange, as soon as we're sold out on that orange, it will not come back. Same with that slate gray. Those will be gone probably for the foreseeable future unless we can find a new source that has those colors. This one is a tumbled brass and black. Um, version so we don't normally do this pen in a tumbled brass or copper uh, it's usually a special release i believe this was a special release during the holidays it might have been a pen club only release as well where we basically heavy tumbled the raw brass bodies and put black hardware on it and there we kind of have it so that being said there's kind of an overview of the bolt v2 this is kind of our version of a bolt action style pen i know a lot of people often ask us you know why don't you put the side the side button on there with a screw um, and you know our answer to that was we wanted something that was going to be a little bit different this was before the times of fidget items too uh, but the bolt definitely does have that um that ability, you can fidget with it all you want with the knob um, if you want to annoy your coworkers or spouse. But it's also just kind of a, it's easy to deploy with that thumb knob on there, one quick click, quick flick of the, of the thumb and you're, you're in there, you know, sit at my desk frequently and do stuff like that. So, you know, just a, a, a a different take on a design that's become ubiquitous with the everyday carry community and, and what have you. So uh, it is hands down our most popular pen in roll, definitely in the rollerball format, one of the most popular ballpoint options that we sell as well, uh, probably second only to the EDK. Uh, so it's a great option if you're looking for something that's a little bit unique but easy to use. Definitely pocket carryable at five and a half inches long. I carry mine in my pocket, my jeans all the time. Carry it in my um, in my my flannel in the top pocket. It fits quite well too. Uh, so, and, and there's tons of options. You know, we have different we have different grip section 
options now with the frag and the fluted and dragon skin and you've done speed groove versions in the past where it adds a little bit of grip option for you so there's all kinds of options with the bullet and with those options it becomes even more like customizable and we're even offering a build your own bolt with some of the pieces and parts that we have left over that are that are good in terms of like they don't have a matching upper they're a color so you can kind of mix and match those together as you will and i'll have a link to that in there in in, in the description as well we'll go ahead and link the um both the both the standard bolt option and the uh and the build a bolt option in the description and then you can kind of puts around as well on the on the page that has all of our bolt options. So without further ado, I want to wrap it up. Again, I'm Paul at Karis Penco. Uh, and thank you for sitting with me for the last 20 minutes and me and listening to me and looking at the different bolt V2 options that we've had in the past and what we have available right now. Uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to our channel, please. We would really love to have you as a subscriber. And stay tuned for more content like this. But until next time, guys, thank you so much, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.